Back with us on the conversation, my guest, Juliet Cuthbert Flynn. She's the Member of Parliament for West Rural St. Andrew, and she had a massive name even before politics. And she says the principles which saw her become an Olympian and a successful one at that stay with her to this day, and they have served her well so far in politics, and she'll continue to live by them until such time. Juliet, the country is in a place where some say, well, the JLP's prosperity mission is working. Some say, well, the JLP's prosperity mission isn't working. We don't feel safe. Andrew Holness talks a good game of cricket, but in terms of how it is played, not many runs are on the board. And they don't see a glass half full. They see a glass half empty and a glass that's leaking. And I've never seen a leaking glass before, <laughs> but they, that's, what, that's, what, that's how some people put it. But your impression of how your prime minister and the administration that you're a part of has gone about the job of delivering on the promises it made pre-February 25, 2016. I am quite pleased so far with what's been happening on the, and the Prime Minister's performance. Of course, you mentioned crime. Crime has to be something that we all work on as Jamaican citizens. Um, it has been a problem. I think it's not just... Um, when you look at the breakdown of society, morals, everything, when you look at that, the way we, we get so angry um, for every little thing. We are abusing our children, not just beating them, mm. we're actually abusing our children. When you think about some of the things you hear, you're good for nothing, you're this, you're that. When you look at the little boys, not so much girls, but on the street, that are left on the street to fend for themselves, all of that goes back into what is, what is it that we're doing as a society to really combat crime? Mm. How does this affect the crime that's now here in Jamaica, at, you know, where, where, it, where it is. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at the entire, the social concept of what do we want in Jamaica um, in order to move Jamaica forward. Now, there are things that are being put in place when you talk about the ZOZO or the SOE, there are things that are, put, are being put in place as far as, um, you know, some of the societal breakdowns in the communities. We have to fix that first. Um, I think the SOE was working. I think it still is working. Yes, it's not the ultimate crime plan, mm -hmm. but we are getting crime down. I think we need to continue on that trend. In the process, we also need to fix the education system. I, I don't think um, we're, it's a level playing field, and I think that also contributes to crime mm. and violence. Um, when you look at you know, you and I, we can probably afford to send our child to a private school mm. where the education system is just a little bit better than what the primary school is. And then when I was going to primary school, you have the overcrowding of schools. Yes. And so the children are not getting the attention that is needed. I think we need to fix from the infant schools. Because mm. a lot of the basic schools, children, which is a private entity, they're possibly not on par with the prep school kids. Mm. So I think we need to fix a lot of things that contribute to crime. Mm. But, but you, your, your prime minister, though, um, he, I can't forget Hanover 2015. It may have been November. I played that clip a couple of times when I was on radio. Said, if you want to sleep with the doors and windows open, put us in. If you want to lock them up still, well, you, you keep the PNP, you get that. And that has been a stick Juliet Cuthbert Flynn, a huge stick that anybody can take and beat this administration with because it has not delivered on that promise. Your prime minister and your administration is falling short. And, and yes, people are saying that. We hear that out there that you said we're going to be able to sleep with yes. our win windows and doors open. And yes, that's not necessarily happening, but we are putting things in place. This, the SOE, I believe, is working. We have seen crime being reduced in some places, and there are some people mm. in those communities who are actually sleeping better, mm. who are actually now sleeping on their beds as opposed to sleeping under the bed. They are hearing less gunshots ringing out in the middle of the night or in the day. And so are they safer? How do they feel about 
what the Prime Minister possibly said. But the, pro the said. problem is this, you know, the problem is this, the problem is not, the problem is not incrementalism, which is what you're saying after three years, because when Andrew Honus sold the plan, he made it to, made it out to be a huge difference between his JLP and Portia Simpson Miller's PNP. He said, look, we will get this thing sorted out immediately. He didn't say, give us three, four years to gradually get crime down, to gradually restore that feeling of safety. He said, put us in. I know what to do it. I can do it. This JLP administration will do it. So it is not enough, I don't think, to defend the, the, the JLP and to defend your prime minister by saying, well, you know, after three years, this has worked in bits and pieces and that has worked in bits and pieces. That's not what the country was promised. Well, I mean, I guess, yes, you're looking at it from that point of view, but crime was at a very high level. We had, what, 1,600 murders, um, I think, in, back in 2016. Mm -hmm. And I think we have gotten that down. No, it's nowhere near where it should be. And we, we're not going to see zero crime in Jamaica just after three years. And I think the prime minister had very good intention um, to say, these are the things we're going to put in place, and uh, this is where we want to be. And no, we're nowhere where we want to be. Mm. Because once Jamaicans are being murdered, I mean, nobody's happy. We hear, you know, not just you know, children are being murdered, you know, returning residents mm. are being murdered. And so, but I think if we work collectively, and I think that's possibly what's missing, we're not working together. Um, to really get this handle on crime. But who is the we that's not joining in the plan? Well, I think as Jamaicans, yes. there are things that must be put in place for Jamaicans. Number one, people must feel safe enough to want to tell what they know mm. or to say what they know to the police. We are working on those things to make, I think people trust the constabulary force now more than three years ago. Mm. I think there's more trust and more faith in the constabulary force. And I think those are some of the things that we're actually putting in place to make sure we turn um, those things around so people feel more comfortable mm. to go to the security forces to tell them what they know. And so those are some of the things that we're working on. But, but, but you know, here's the thing. So far, where crime and national security are concerned, mm -hmm. someone could reasonably say and credibly say that this wholeness administration is not superior to the previous PNP administration. And the reason that will rank is because they said, well, the, the prime minister told us that they would be better, but they're not better. The other thing is this, corruption. Somehow, the PNP latched on early to a phrase that they've used to describe this JLP, and it would seem to some as if the, 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 the idea is being fed by things that are happening under the JLP's watch. They said that the administration you're a part of is the most corrupt since independence. That's a huge claim because we've had some terrible governments where corruption is concerned over the years. The PNP say you are number one, and then they, 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 they point to various scandals, and then they've added a, another questionable issue to that pile, the issue of RADA and the deep bushing and the 1.6 billion and all of that. How did which, which, which cannot be proved. But hold on, before we get to that, <laughs> how did the oldest administration, Juliet Cuthbert Flynn, find itself in a position where people can look at it and even say with seriousness that it is the most corrupt administration since independence? And how know, did you get here? I, and you know, I think, again, you employ persons, but you, you're the head, but sometimes you can't help what other people are going to do. It's what you do afterwards. And I think the Integr Integrity Commission, I think some of the things that the Jamaica Labor Party has done um, for transparency, mm. this government, our government, we've talk, we talk about transparency, and that is one of the things that we focus on and spoke about during the election. And I think our prime minister, this prime minister, Andrew Holness, um, comes out whenever he's not defending anyone, mm. he says, let the chip fall where they may. Mm. And so we're not preventing anything from happening um, when it comes to investigation. And I think that is something that is a positive thing that Jamaicans are actually looking at mm. to say, this is, there's a difference between this government mm. and possibly the previous government where we are actually allowing things to take its course, where we're allowing the investigation mm -hmm. to go on. We're not preventing, we're not covering up, we're not hiding anything. Mm -hmm. And so I think that is a big difference between the Jamaica Labour Party government and the People's National Party um, government when mm -hmm. they're, in, they're in power. There were lots of scandals that went on during the PMP. Mm -hmm. How many persons were investigated or the investigation came out? How many reach were 
w where we are today with Petrojam and the other scandals. Mm. I think persons will look at and judge this prime minister by the, his action. Mm -hmm. What has he done mm -hmm. to really, you know, did he try to cover up? Or is he allowing things to flow and for things to happen to come out, as, as he says? So, and I think that is a big difference. So, so, so as you say, you're saying the tag of most corrupt since independence is what? Um, Rubbish. I, 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 when you look at what the things that's happened in the in the PNP, mm. and you look at some of the things that's happened in even with this Rada situation, there's no proof. Um, I don't really take or big, you know, when we do um, budget, mm -hmm. those books are pretty. Yes. It's a lot of books. The estimates of expenses. They're they call it a big book. It, it, right. yes. And it, it's it, not for it, nothing that they call it because it's a huge book. And I have yes. no space in my house for it. I just went back and I looked, I Googled mm -hmm. um, to say, wait a minute. Let me see what the expenditure was for the entire year for RADA, mm -hmm. just after listening and hearing what was going on. Yes. And it was right there. Yes. And I said, but this doesn't make any sense. And so this, I don't think, there's no scandal here. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the PNP, they're trying to push a lot of the scandal thing mm -hmm. to tarnish what's been happening, the good that's been happening with the Jamaica Labour Party. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's going to work. Because mm -hmm. I think people want more substance. They want to possibly um, see them talk about other things, yes. what they want to see hap happen in Jamaica, and not just focus on, on scandals. You, you say that one of the differences between the JLP and PNP is that whereas things happen under the PNP, you say they, they did nothing or they thwarted investigations or processes that were to be applied in the cases where there were scandals and matters to investigate. And the re reaction of the JLP is different and that makes them different. But one would have thought, based on the Prime Minister's own pronouncements, that the kind of government he said he would run would be such that persons would be dissuaded from even being involved in anything which could emerge as a national scandal, a public scandal. That hasn't happened. So one has to question, Juliet, the, 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 the control, the authority that the prime minister is exerting within this administration, and if he is the exemplar of integrity that he says he is. But he is, and I think Jamaicans do believe that. Um, I think people trust this prime minister. Um, when you look at even the people's reaction, children's reaction, mm. I think people are more trusting of this prime minister than possibly any other prime minister. Mm. I think he's, he comes off very sincere. And um, I can't, and I'm sure the prime minister can't answer that question either, why mm. anyone. You know, I know I went in with a certain integrity. Mm -hmm. And I trust, I see the same in my prime minister. Mm. Um, and so I would never do anything to deviate from that, mm. to, to tarnish myself or, or, or the administration. Mm. So you can't blame or you, you, know, you can't say, oh, this person shows whatever integrity and then you had people working for him that dishonor that. Mm -hmm. I don't think that is fair yeah. um, because you have no control over what your 30 odd members do. Mm -hmm. You just have to show, make sure they know that I am not going to put up with you um, doing anything um, that's going to tarnish the administration and I'm just going to sit there and take it. And I think he has shown that and I think everybody sees that. Not just us in his, in, in, in his administration, but the entire Jamaica mm -hmm. understands that. And I think that is um, the most important thing um, for Jamaicans. I don't think Jamaicans um, feel that he doesn't have that type of that integrity yes. or stand up for what he believes that, that is right. And so um, I, I think th that's a difference right there with what he's done and said yes. as opposed to the PNP. Hear you on that. We take our final break. When we come back, we finish up Judith Cuthbert Flynn, MP, West Rural St. Andrew in Jamaica.